Hey, what's going on, everyone? This is Mitch. A good Sunday morning to you all. Hope you guys have been having a great weekend and having a great morning so far out there. We're going to talk about the weather specifically for today, as we always do in the morning videos, and talk about what could potentially happen in the weather world. I am expecting certain areas to see some strong, severe thunderstorms like it has seemed to always been the case over the last several weeks. So we're going to talk a little bit about that in one specific area which doesn't commonly see a whole lot of severe weather. They see severe weather, but you know nothing too crazy. I'm not expecting anything too crazy today, but um, it's the area of basically the interior northeast, the basically the area bordering, bordering of the Canadian line all the way up to Maine has a slight risk of severe storms a day with an isolated tornado threat. So we're going to talk about that, really narrow in on that, and then I talk about the entire lower 48 as a whole so i really appreciate the support if you guys have not subscribed definitely consider always doing that like the video if you like it i uh, apologize for you know missing quite a few evenings this week you know i normally double up my videos but i missed two or three evenings this week it's been a very busy and trying week for sure with just a couple things that's been going on but things are finally starting to slow down a little bit and i can get back to my normal routine but i appreciate the support regardless if you guys got anything that i can pray about please put it in the comments below it gives me an opportunity to pray over it and it gives a whole lot of others an opportunity to pray over it also so today in the storm prediction center as far as severe storms you got a marginal risk stretching all the way from southeast louisiana all the way up to Maine. And then you got the slight risk right here for interior areas of the Northeast. This includes an area of Northeast PA, um, a large area, of basically the entire central portion of New York State, and then a law, basically the entire state of um, Vermont, and then a large section of New Hampshire, um, and then basically half of Maine, the entire northern half of Maine and western half of Maine is under a, a slight risk today. And then you have the entire uh, western portion of Massachusetts that's also got a chance of severe weather today. And really the, what can happen today is you can have some isolated semi-discrete supercells that could really get going across this region and promote an environment uh, for tornadoes. Now, I'm not talking about a tornado outbreak, but there is, as you can tell a 5% risk of a tornado all the way really just only for Maine. And then a 2% risk stretches all the way down to those other states I just mentioned. Then you have a little bit of a tornado threat down here in the Panhandle of Florida today too. You got to watch out. There's a little bit of a spin in the Gulf of Mexico. We'll talk a little bit about that. It's going to promote an environment for tornadoes, maybe some water spouts just off the coast of the Panhandle of Florida. Wind threat is there with the entire severe um, weather risk today, 15% risk. So it was the highest up here where you got the slight rest and you got the health threat today really only focusing in on the northeast and areas of the mid-atlantic 15 percent risk of hell 25 miles in any given location in this yellow area water vapor loop kind of showing what's going on we mentioned this last night the leftover energy is pulling into the gulf of mexico and if you look at this you can actually see it this huge line of showers and storms finally slowly drifting into the gulf of mexico and uh, you guys have picked up a lot of rain and extreme southeast areas of texas houston points north and points northeast and east has picked up a lot of rain this morning continues to do so it's just a slow moving mesoscale convective system has really been hitting this area hard this morning like it was predicted and with water vapor loop you can see well where all the water vapor is where all the water content is you know streaming into the gulf of mexico about to collide into this other disturbance which is a leftover piece of energy from yesterday which is trying to continuously fire up convection you know there was a little bit of a noise not literal but a little bit of noise you know talk in the weather world talking about the potential that this could maybe fire up into a quick tropical system we've seen things like this happen before we'll continue to monitor this today and see if it continues to pop up deep convection in the gulf of mexico but this will eventually kind of drift into areas of the Gulf Coast and eventually bring a good bit of rain to areas of Georgia and the Carolinas, the Panhandle of Florida here in the next 24, 48 hours. So we'll continue to watch this as it kind of drifts over the warmish waters of the Gulf of Mexico. You know, the Gulf of Mexico isn't extremely warm right now like you would see in July, August and September, but it's warming up substantially for sure. This is the time of the year where it really starts to warm up. But if you look at the two-day um, tropical weather outlook from the Hurricane Center, it's not pinpointing this area at all, which is right here. So it's not really giving it any chance to develop. But 
The H triple R model is very aggressive with liking it, but the H triple R model isn't necessarily good a good tropical model to look at when it comes to looking at any kind of tropical disturbances whatsoever. Let's talk about the Northeast, the severe weather threat today. We're getting into about lunchtime, nothing really going on, but as you're getting into a 2 to 4 p.m., storms start to fire up in Maine. And I mean, they even look discreet, you know, off the this model guidance right here, all the way down to West Virginia. In fact, I would not be surprised if a slight risk gets extended into more interior areas of the mid-Atlantic regions a little bit later here in the coming hours. I wouldn't be surprised at all. Well, you know, the, the discussion from the Storm Prediction Center already mentions the possibility of upgrading, but just not enough model guidance uh, is there to really, you know, have heightened confidence that it will upgrade in the latest um, update. But anyways, watch out for these storms later today in Maine, for sure. Tornado threat will be the highest there. You see the surface low pressure right here. So the kinematics are best, like we've always talked about in severe weather season. Kinematics meaning that wind energy. Basically think of that as the energy that can put a spin to these updrafts or these storms. So it's always best right just south, southeast, and east of this low pressure, really southeast. So that's why these storms are the ones to worry about the most in Maine when it comes to a tornado threat. Of course, you've got enough forcing to fire up storms way down here also, but at the same time, uh, you know, it's probably not as prime for tornadoes as it is up here in Maine. But we'll watch these into, you know, more storms as we're getting into the 5 to 6 p.m. range, start to drift from can Canada into the U.S., Maine, and uh, they even have the look to them, you know, that, that kidney bean look to them where they kind of curl like this. So uh, please watch out in Maine today. And then even watch out in areas of New Hampshire and uh, Vermont. These little cells could be dangerous. You know, maybe an isolated tornado threat, but damaging winds and small hail is definitely the biggest threat with these. Not everybody will see rain. But, uh, you know, you could see severe thunderstorms all the way down to Maryland, Virginia today for sure. And these will continue through the evening hours and the atmosphere will stabilize and you'll be okay. Down here in the southeast, in the southeast, uh, decaying kind of energy will fall apart and then some more will fire back up early this afternoon. I think we'll see more showers and storms throughout the entire southeast, but not everybody will see it. Um, Kentucky, West Virginia, Virginia, um, North Carolina, even Tennessee, you know, the deep south states, Georgia, Alabama, Mississippi, you guys could see pop-up showers and storms today, just like yesterday, but not everybody's going to see rain. Um, in fact, I thought my area yesterday was going to get whiffed and then we ended up, two storms ended up kind of merging together and luckily we got almost a half an inch of rain yesterday here at my location, which we really needed it. So it was really nice to see. But um, looking at what's going on here, we're getting into about the dinner time period today and you still got showers and storms firing up. It's going to be very hard to know. That's why it's a good day. When you get in the summer, it's always good to have a good reliable radar like Radar Scope, Radar Omega, My Radar. Um, you know, I always favor radar scope just because it's the only one that I have experience with, but they're all great. I'm sure, um, here in the deep South, a lot of deep convection will be ongoing. So if you're in Southern sections of Alabama, Mississippi, the Panhandle, Florida, a lot of showers and storms today, but as we're getting into later in the afternoon, evening hours, this will continue to be ongoing. And even in the Panhandle, Florida, as whatever's going on down here in the Gulf of Mexico continues to drift closer to the coast. And funnel in moisture, especially on the right side of this, into areas of southern Alabama and the Panhandle of Florida for sure. And in fact, you know, we'll take a deeper look at the deep south. And this is between now and tomorrow morning. So about 24-hour period. A lot of rain showing up down here. But you notice it's very, it looks very, you know, sporadic in nature. That's because the AARR model, it's a high-resolution model. It tries to predict exactly where the moisture is going to pop up. But just in general, if you're down here, um, in the southern sections of Alabama, the Panhandle, Florida, you guys could see several inches of rain. There could be training, basically, where showers and storms right over the same areas. So you could get several inches of rain down here. So please be careful. And then a lot of rain showing up, even up here, you know, in northern areas of those states, even into Tennessee, even in the southeast Arkansas, especially between now and the next several hours for sure. So please be careful. My folks in the south central U.S., really the, the main show is going on right now where you got the leftover energy from the showers and storms. But after this moves on through, more cooler, stable air kind of drifts in. And it's a pretty quiet day across the south central U.S., Texas, Oklahoma, Kansas, Missouri. Cooler day and just uh, not a whole lot going on. Same deal for up here in the north central U.S., 
in the Ohio Valley, uh, much more chill conditions and probably a little chill to the air, honestly, and just not a whole lot going on. Maybe some showers um, for areas of the northern Michigan region, just south of Lake Superior. Um, but outside of that, <clears throat> I mean, there's not going to be a whole lot going on for sure today. Just a stable air mass where cooler air has moved through, and you can see it up here. Highs only in the 50s and 60s in this part of the country right here. You get a little bit closer down here, and you're a little bit more warmer, but still it'll feel more like a spring day as opposed to a summer day like y'all been feeling here in the Midwest and the Ohio Valley, which is highs in the 60s and 70s. But the immediate eastern U.S., you're just – Especially the southeast, you're just getting to that time of the year where the cold fronts don't really clear. And even if they do, they don't really make much of a difference. Um, so, you know, a warm, kind of wet, damp air mass in the southeast where more showers and storms will pop up. And then in the extreme areas of the eastern U.S., especially the I-95 corridor, you guys will warm well into the 80s, probably low 90s in certain areas today. And then you'll have those showers and storms up here in the interior and northeast. But in Florida, will just be your, its regular tropical air mass like it always is this time of the year. But, you know, you start to get into areas of Kentucky, Indiana, Illinois, Arkansas, points northwest, um, much more stable air. A nice day. Um, it's going to be kind of cloudy in certain areas, but, you know, it's just going to be cooler. A cooler Sunday for sure. Definitely not going to feel like summer. Western U.S., pretty quiet. You got leftover energy kind of flowing through Idaho areas in Montana and Wyoming where you got some higher elevation snow, lower elevation rain. And then another system starts kind of bringing a little bit of rain for areas of Washington, Washington State and Oregon a little bit later in the evening hours. Some showers can drift onshore. Um, and we're still, you know, a little bit cooler, but in general, more just average temperatures this time of the year, a little bit more warmer than average for these sections of the country right here. But in general, just not a whole lot going on, uh, pretty nothing crazy compared to above average or below average out here in the West. Um, one thing I want to mention and very, very cool to look at is, uh, is a, a outbreak. I wouldn't even call it an outbreak. That's kind of an exaggerated term, but um, a plume of Saharan dust has made it all the way from, well, the, the desert in uh, northern um, Africa and uh, has drifted all the way across the tropical Atlantic through the Caribbean and is now beginning to move into areas of the Gulf, um, the Gulf states and Florida. And uh, what this will mean is, is if we can get um, maybe a sunset or something, where we don't have a lot of clouds around it. They, they, it doesn't do much, right? Unless it's just very, very thick. And it could be for areas like Florida as we get into tomorrow and then maybe southern areas of Georgia, maybe in Alabama and Mississippi. As you can tell, this is the area where probably it's the thickest dust right here. It's always cool to look at this. I love the graphic here on weathermodels.com. Um, but what they can, what these typically can do is they make very vibrant sunsets. Very beautiful sunsets. Um, as far as what they do to the air quality, they obviously don't help it. But unless you get like ex an extreme plume of uh, Saharan dust, it doesn't do a ton to the atmosphere. But two summers ago, we got a huge plume of um, Saharan dust in the atmosphere that stretched all the way up into the mid-Atlantic. And uh, man, you could really see it in the atmosphere. It was wild. Um, but anyways, uh, so this will be a little interesting thing to watch and see how it does, what it does to the skies, how hazy it makes the skies look, especially watch out areas of Florida and those states I just mentioned. But that's all I got, guys. Thank you all for tuning in. Hope you all have a great Sunday. God bless all y'all, and I'll talk to y'all this evening.